Hey guys, Captain Rick Murphy here, and as you can tell, I'm on the Miss Brit charter boat with my dear friend, Ray Rocher of the Miss Brit. You know, Ray, you guys own R&R &R Tackle, mm -hmm. and certainly you sell a variety of different things, but for right now, let's talk about all these different sabikis and all these different colors and all these different size monofilament frames and what we should know. So let's start off first off, if we're gonna be trying to catch some herring or let's just take it right off the top of the list. I see that we have a variety here. Yeah, these two are my favorites. So you got green little beads and then you have this one is half red and half green. What is that, what is that for? Why is that mix? When you're bait fishing, a lot of times you pull into a mark of bait on your recorder and you really don't know what it is. It could be here in South Florida, it could be a Manhattan, a herring, a sardine, a cigar minnow, blue runners, goggle eyes, you know, the list is big. Right. So I call this my tester rig, the red and green. And bottom line is when you get into that school and you drop it down, you're gonna find out A, what kind of bait it is, and B, what do they like the most? For instance, if it were sardines, you would probably wanna transition over to this red, if they eat the red, which they typically do. If I knew that I caught sardines in that mark, I'd probably switch over to red, all eight hooks red. So you're telling me that certain bait fish like the certain color bead over the other? Is there a reason why that is? Don't really know, but I don't, do you remember as a kid a red ribbon rig? Yeah. Right. Rings right. and a red ribbon. Right. I made a living on that rig when I was 10, 12 years old, selling bait at the Juno Pier, a dollar a dozen. That's what they used to pay me. Whoa. And, yeah, Pete Schultz used to keep an eye on me. <laughs> <laughs> my, basically, my dad abandoned me during the day. <laughs> would, yeah, yeah. But anyways, that red ribbon rig stuck in my head. A man Hayden, they didn't have a green ribbon rig. Right. They had a red ribbon rig, and they would attack that. You'd put it down in the school of Manhattan, and the rod would just do this, and all of a sudden it would bend over. Well, you've got one stuck in the ring, and now you'd wind it up, and you'd straighten out the ring. See, like right there, we just caught right. two thread fin herring. What did they bite? The, the green. green. Right, so green is typically what a herring would use. So what would a pilchard, if you were catching Man pilchards? Hayden. Yeah, red. So they're like red. Yeah, and think about this. This is why the orientation of the red, this is the bottom four hooks, right? and the green is the top four. Where do the thread fins lay in the water column? They're above the, the pilchards. Man Hayden on the bottom. Right. So that's kind of what goes into this. It's, it wasn't an accident. We're trying to match, at least in South Florida, what what we find, and that is Man Hayden on the bottom layer, green, bug, the old bug light that used to be place where you would have pilchards on the bottom so that's where this came from but i've used it in places like ocean city maryland where they told me peanut bunker wouldn't bite a sabiki and i used this exact rig an rgf4 right half the the bunker ate the hook and half were snagged so right. you do snag quite a few of them they're they're not as quick to bite but they did bite a, the red and green rig and they didn't seem to prefer red or green but they bit and some baits are like that i've had it where the, the thread fin herring are biting the red so you can't the red and green never hurts you that's my number one rig because i figure i'm giving them you know cookies and ice cream whatever they want right and so that's the logic behind mixed colored rigs but if you're going just herring fishing i'd probably just put a green rig on all right so now what if you're like a guy that lives in alabama and you want to catch blue runners or we want to catch goggle eyes yeah which one of these would be designed for that? The shiniest one. The shiniest no, one. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> they're all shiny. Come on, Ray. They're shiny when they're new. But anyways, we. I mean, so, so here's the here's the real answer. You got a BR three, three hooks, sixty pound, forty pound. So giant, heavy, big blue runners. We make a BR two. So if you were catching big SKA kingfish baits, BR two, BR three. But let's say you're gonna just fish for small half pound, one pound runners, GI. L8, the, uh, you've got all kinds of different choices here, H HT16, HTC16, all of those are, you know, 10 hook, white feathers, but of course, you would want to match the bait size to the number of hooks, so that's really the, the, the controlling factor. This is a, the BF4 is a good one. We have one that's an FSH4, fish four we call it. Those are good for those medium one to two pound runners. I gotcha. So, but you're, or maybe you're going to Panama or Costa Rica and you want to catch some Bonitas. Bonitas. BR2, BR3. And that would be the size. Yep, put a spoon on the bottom. Right. And then two Drop hooks. it behind the boat and troll it. Yep, 60 pound, 40 pound. So if you look here on these bars, it'll tell you the pound test. So all of that means something. It's all designed to, you know, educate you on what, you know, it's not, it's not just the 
the size of the bait, but the water clarity. So super clear water. We even have a GIL-8 right here, 15 pound, 30 pound, that's designed for clear water goggle eye fishing. When, when we started out goggle eye fishing, we hand tied all our rigs. Right. So we were taking an open eye, a big, you know, big eyed hook and putting flash of boo and nylon hair and hand tying them. Well, we tied pink, blue, purple, yellow, red, whatever. And same deal. Some nights you would see them bite the dark ones. So we make a BLK 10, which is, which is 10 black feathers. Nice. So, and believe it or not, on a full moon, it's like bass fishing. Yeah, they're silhouette seeing it, it, silhouette. Yep. All right, so let's decide. We've already picked our sabiki. It doesn't matter really what we're fishing for, but it can be intimidating taking one out of the package. I noticed you got this one kind of pre-ready to go. What yep. are we going to do here, Ray? When you look uh, if you look at the back, you got just a standard crane swivel and a snap swivel. So if you look at this, I hook the snap swivel. I like a bead so it doesn't pull this little swivel through your tip and damage your tip. So I use a full-blown snap swivel with a little bead, so that's my stopper. Right. I snap that crane swivel to the snap. Right. You can put the lead, open the package, put the lead on the snap swivel. Crane swivel at the top, snap swivel at the bottom. And the way these are designed is they just pull right out of the package. And you just reel as you go yep. so that it doesn't get hooked upon itself. Yep, that's it. And then I take this, I make a little, this is kind of charter boat style, egg sinker, cheaper, right? little loop. When I'm done, I just hook it on my handle. Well, there you have it, guys. You know, now let's talk a little bit about D-hookers, Ray. So you've got a variety of different D-hookers. You've got long handle D-hookers, little short handles with a, this goes around your wrist so that you can let it go and you're not looking for your D-hooker while you're fishing. Mm -hmm. That's the part I like. But on the back of each one of your sabiki rigs. It's right here on the front. Or, oh, on the front. It's, yeah. There's a recommended D-hooker size to use. And while we're talking about D-hookers, we have small, medium, and large so why don't we talk about the medium and then transfer over to the large so the the, the reason that you would use a, a medium or small on bait is the wire diameter so a medium has uh, let's say an eighth inch wire and a small has a 16th inch wire. What that's designed to do is if you look at the gap of a hook, you should never use a D-hooker that's thicker than 50% of the gap of your hook. Correct. Because if you're, especially if you're gonna hold bait for any length of time, you're gonna want them to eat. Well, in order to eat, you can't damage their mouth as you're catching them, right? Right, right. So the bottom line is, you want to make sure that you put them in that live well with not a broken mouth. So imagine if you use too fat of a dehooker, too thick of a wire. Now, when you go to try to shake him off the hook, all you're doing with a dehooker is you're turning the hook upside down and shaking, right? So now gravity helps you. Gotcha. But if that wire were too thick, the bait could not get by the wire, and in the process, you're He's mangling his lip. And you're pinning him to the D hooker. You're pinning him, and now you're going, why won't this bait come off? Well, dummy, your D hooker's too thick, and that's why we put the recommendation on the package. And then we have big D hookers for removing food, hooks food fish, yeah. out of toothy fish. Yeah, toothy fish, kingfish, wahoos, sharks, barracudas. barracudas. Yeah, what you learn is the, the, um, the D hooker's the quickest way and the safest way for you as an angler. Right. Because all you really want to do is take a wrap on the line and get the hook on the D hooker. It doesn't matter if you're using this one or this one. This, the principle is the same. Sorry, we got baits coming in. Yeah, I know, you're it's, yeah, it's like killing a, it's you. Like a cat. Right. <laughs> Anyways, the bottom line is you're just securing the leader. I like two wraps on my hand. I like to get small or, low, you know, if I'm talking about a game fish, two, two wraps on my hand where now I've got a rigid control of that leader and I get the D hooker on the leader and slide it to the hook and then all you're doing is rotating that D hooker up. We put a flat spot on the back side of our D hooker so without having to even pay attention, you, when you grip this D hooker, you know which way the opening is. So you can quickly get them upside down, shake them. I noticed something different about this one yep. than all the others. So why do we have a secondary hook or curve into that one? So imagine you got a kingfish, wahoo, brought him in the boat. He's in the box. He's inside his gill plates. You see him or down in the back of his mouth. You can have someone, it is kind of a two-man job, but have someone hold the fish with his head pinned in the corner. Right. You take that double wrap on the leader, and now you get that bend on the hook, like my finger, and you're gonna push that hook out of the fish that way. And then twist it twist and pull it, it out. Pull it out. I'm learning today, bud. <laughs> well guys, only thing I can tell you to catch more bait is go down to your local store, 
Check out the R&R &R tackle selection of D hookers as well as sabikis. And if you like this video and you wanna see more, make sure you subscribe below and click on this link and share it with all your friends.